like and subscribe right now or you're going to have bad luck for the rest of the week. We all know the basics of the food chain. Plants eat sunlight, animals eat plants, and bigger animals eat smaller animals. In the world of nature though, there are always exceptions, as evidenced by plants that attract, trap, and digest animals in the most gruesome way. If you think you've seen it all, believe me, you haven't. You'll realize this after getting to know about these 10 carnivorous plants. Number one feasts on large animals such as sheep, so stay tuned for that. Number 10, Brocconia reducta. What if I told you that the pineapple has a very twisted relative? I know it's hard for us to think of plants the same way we do of animals and human beings, but plants are also living beings, and just like us, they're also split into families. And yes, the pineapple does have a carnivorous relative, and it's called Brocconia reducta. Both the Brocconia and the pineapple belong to the Bromeliad family, which also includes Spanish mosses and many succulents with thick leaves. The Brocconia has long pitchers that allow it to absorb and reflect ultraviolet light, which makes insects go crazy. This plant then releases a smell, like many others on this list, and the bugs can't help but come closer. And just like that, this harmless-looking plant ends the lives of many insects in Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, and Brazil. Experts in carnivorous plants were actually not sure if this plant belonged to the group, but they finally learned in 2005 that the Brocchinia has those digestive enzymes that are common in animal-eating plants. Number 9. Cobra Lily Like many other carnivorous plants, the Cobra Lily grows best in places with very few nutrients in the native soil and poor access to other means of sustenance. Those conditions are most commonly believed to lead to carnivorous tendencies in plants. Despite its name, the cobra lily isn't technically a lily, and it certainly isn't a cobra. It gets its name from its snake-like appearance, and the similarities don't stop there. Much like snakes, the cobra lily prefers its food living. Unlike a real snake, however, this carnivorous creature can't move at high speeds and must rely on some other ingenious tactics instead. In order to capture its prey, the cobra lily uses a combination of directional hairs and lubricating secretions in order to cause insects to slip into the plant. Once inside, the prey can no longer see the tiny exit hole, but instead, they see a number of false openings. The trapped insect will exhaust itself trying to exit through the false openings. Once exhausted, the insect will fall into the bottom of the trap and be broken down by digestive fluids. Number 8. Trifiophyllum A lot of plants on this list, or perhaps all of them, will make you feel like they were taken out of a sci-fi movie. At least, that's how I feel about the Trifiophyllum, which we can also call liana. This plant goes through many stages that make you wonder if this is actually a work of nature or some result of a crazy and evil experiment. During its first stage, the liana grows its leaves, which have the shapes of ovals. But then, when it starts flowering, it also starts producing long and sticky leaves to feed itself with insects. These leaves are capable of luring the poor insects and then catching them and even digesting them. Towards the end of its life cycle, the liana's leaves are short and hooked, and they're about 30 meters long. But you don't have to worry about running into one of these in the wild, unless you're in West Africa. Number 7. Tropical Pitcher Plant The tropical pitcher plant, also known as Nepenthes, is one of 170 different types of pitcher plants that make up some of the largest carnivorous plants in the world. The giant tropical pitcher can be found in a range of places, including South China, Indonesia, Malaysia, the Philippines, Madagascar, Seychelles, Australia, New Caledonia, and northward to India, Sri Lanka. Sometimes called a monkey cup, these plants, which can reach 15 meters in height, are often used as a water source by monkeys, who benefit from water buildup in the plant's pitchers. While local monkeys benefit from the plant, many smaller creatures wind up falling prey to it. In fact, the Nepenthes is intricately designed to capture unsuspecting insects and even small vertebrates. The pitcher spends periods preparing to feed. During these times, the top stays closed, and the pitcher is focused on creating digestive fluids. As long as the pitcher is closed, these fluids are entirely sterile. Once the pitcher opens, the plant produces sweet nectar that acts as bait for the pitcher's prey, which includes ants, spiders, scorpions, centipedes, snails, frogs, and even sometimes rats. It captures its prey by luring them into the pitcher before slippery secretions cause them to fall in. Once inside, 
the prey is dissolved by digestive fluids and absorbed by the plant for nutrition. That sounds like a horribly unpleasant way to go. Number 6. The Moccasin Plant The moccasin plant was originally discovered in the southwestern region of Australia, also called genus Syphilotus. This plant checks all the proper boxes for any insect that has fallen victim to it. The moccasin plant attracts insects with its sweet and nice scent, which then lures them into the plant's moccasin-shaped pitchers, where the prey will be slowly digested. The plants usually confuse the insects with the lids of their pitchers, having translucent cells that would cause insects to hit themselves silly while trying to escape the trap. One feature that makes the moccasin plant different and unusual is its close relations to the flowering plants like oak trees and apple trees, unlike other carnivorous pitcher plants that can be easily chunked up to convergent evolution. Number 5. The Waterwheel Plant The next carnivorous plant in this video is quite a peculiar one for sure. First, it's one of the few plants capable of rapid movement, a very important quality for its survival. On the other hand, it's completely rootless. Hence, it needs to be in water throughout its entire life. It's also the most widely distributed animal-eating plant being endemic to Australia, Europe, Africa, and Asia, more specifically along migratory bird routes. To capture aquatic vertebrates, it depends on their leaves that grow in whirls of up to nine. Under ideal conditions, these whirls are produced quickly, with at least a new whirl developing every day. The trap leaves are lined on the inside with hairs that sense contact with any aquatic invertebrate. Once contact has been established, the traps snap in as little as 10 to 20 milliseconds, making the water wheel plant one of the fastest movers in the plant kingdom. But this mechanism is not possible in any kind of water. These traps can only snap in warm conditions, typically over 20 degrees Celsius. Number 4. Viridula The next plant I'll introduce to you is quite evil. It captures a lot of insects but doesn't actually eat them. How messed up is that? But that's just how nature works. There's an explanation that'll help us understand its behavior. The viridula, which is originally from South Africa, has a lot of sticky hairs that help it capture insects just so a bunch of insects called pemeridia can come and eat the viridula's catch. What's in it for the plant? Well, the plant can get all the nutrients it needs from the insect's waste. That is more than enough. By the way, 40 million year old fossils of viridula have been discovered in the Baltic region of Europe, a sign that this plant was much more widespread during the Cenozoic area than it is now. Number 3. Portuguese Sundew You probably thought all of the animal-eating plants on this list were probably found in humid or exotic locations like a remote jungle in the southern hemisphere, but that's not the case with the Portuguese Sundew. This plant actually grows in soil that lacks a lot of nutrients necessary for a plant's survival. You can find it in Portugal, Spain, and Morocco. So what can this plant do to make up for the lack of nutrients in the soil? Heat insects, of course! Just like many of the plants I have here today, the Portuguese sundew fascinates nearby insects with a tempting aroma that makes them get closer and ultimately get trapped by a sticky substance on its leaves. The plant is then able to dissolve the bugs by using its specialized digestive enzymes and absorbs all of the nutrients that the Mediterranean soil fails to provide. That's what I call survival. You gotta do what it takes to stay alive in a place with limited resources, and the Portuguese sundew is a great example of that. Number 2. The Venus Flytrap The Venus Flytrap is to other carnivorous plants what the Tyrannosaurus rex is to dinosaurs. Maybe not the biggest, but certainly the most well-known member of its breed. Despite what you may have seen in the movies, the Venus Flytrap is fairly small. This entire plant is no more than half a foot in length, and its sticky, eyelid-like traps are only about an inch long. The Venus flytrap is native to the North Carolina and South Carolina subtropical wetlands. One interesting fact about the Venus flytrap, to cut down on false alarms from falling leaves and pieces of debris, this plant's traps will snap shut only if an insect touches two different interior hairs in the course of 20 seconds. However, this isn't the most dangerous plant out there. This next one will blow your mind. Number 1. Puya chilensis The Venus flytrap eats small animals, but have you ever heard of a plant eating a whole sheep? Nope, I'm not kidding at all. This list is very bizarre. The plants I'm talking about is the Puya chilensis. Looking at this spiky thingy, you must be thinking, how in the world can this swallow a whole sheep? Well, it actually doesn't have to swallow anything. It kills the innocent animal in a much more sinister way. 
Puya chilensis, which can reach two meters high up in the air, look sort of like aloe leaves. But in between, there are huge, sharp spines that jut out past them. The spikes actually trap animals with thick fur, like sheep. The poor, unlucky creature then starves to death and falls to the ground. After a few days, it decomposes at the base of the plant, providing vibrant, localized food for the plant. The whole sheep process really is gruesome as hell. Swallowing the entire sheep sounds way better now, doesn't it? Which one of these plants did you find the most terrifying and also fascinating? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.